the SHB side of things, not 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 something that a lot of people are probably aware of, but uh, it, 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 it acts in a way like Proviro. Absolutely. But better than Proviro, you actually get muscle growth or potential yeah. muscle gains from it. So. Yeah, so I mean, when you look at it that way, you've got a DHT product that gives muscle gains, also reduces SHBG, uh, and also reduces estrogen. It, it, it's quite a nice, neat little compound. Hey, what's going on, guys? On this episode of Drugs and Stuff, well, first of all, Dave is back. So we talk about where he's been for the last month. Then after that, we go to our steroid profile of the week. By overwhelming demand from you guys, listeners, we talk about Masteron. After that, we go to our listener questions. We discuss T3 dosage and timing. We talk about improving your EGFR numbers and kidney support. What are the signs of high estrogen? And finally, combining D-ball with Anadrol. All of that and a bunch more. Guys, we're going to do that right now here on Drugs and Stuff. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Drugs and Stuff with Dave Crossland. I'm Scott McNally. All of our programming is brought to you by truenutrition.com. You can use our code ADVICES for some additional savings. Everything's third-party tested, high-quality health and performance supplements. I am back here today with uh, Dave Crossland, back from the dead. What's up, man? How you doing? I am I am alive. Yes. He lives again. I liked you a lot better when you were sick. You were a lot nicer to me. Well... You weren't nice to me. I you kept you kept sending me texts going die. I hope you die. <laughs> Hurry up and die. <laughs> this is taking too long. Uh, yes, yes, those sort of things. Yes, yeah, yeah. Horrible man. Man, that was a that was an episode. Uh, so uh, I I know that. So we have, of course, a lot of our a lot of our followers, listeners, and, and viewers uh, follow us on social media. Uh, Dave, you're a big Facebook guy. You've been keeping everybody up to date over there. Uh, you know, and I've been keeping people up to date at the Think Big Bodybuilding Media and Advices Radio Group. But uh, basically, you we recorded about a month ago. We did our D-Ball episode. Got really good feedback, by the way. Thanks, everybody, for listening to that show. And by the way, if you enjoy this episode, do us a favor. Hit the like. Give us comments. All that stuff. Uh, it helps to boost us in the algorithm so other people will see the show. But after that, Dave... You uh, you got pneumonia, and you were you were yeah, really it was, sick. It was literally night and day. I woke up one morning, well, went to bed feeling fine. Woke up the morning feeling like absolute dog shit. Yeah. Um, surprising thing about pneumonia was the pain. Um, huh. It was incredibly painful, and I didn't expect that. And it was, I went to breathe in, and I got a sharp stabbing pain in my chest, in my lungs. Yeah. Um, I was convinced I trapped a nerve. I was utterly and totally, I even argued with the doctor. I was totally convinced I trapped a nerve. And then yeah. he sat me down and explained it all. And I had pneumonia in my right lung. Uh, they didn't want to keep me in hospital because of COVID. They wanted me out of the way, which, fair enough. I didn't particularly want to be in hospital on antibiotics. And, and it, it, it started to clear up quite quickly. So the first week I improved quite well. Uh, lots of problems with breathing, uh, couldn't lie down, had to sit up, couldn't sleep because I was sitting up all the time. But uh, And then at uh, the end of that week, things took a bit of a turn for the worst and, and pains came and changed and, and my just general health wasn't the best. And uh, I ended up being sort of treated as an outpatient going back and forth. Um, and they were worried about blood clots, but because of my kidneys, in order to check for blood clots, you do a CT scan with contrast. But because of my kidneys, I shouldn't really have contrast. Mm. So there were a lot of arguing about that. Um, in fact, they sent me for four CT scans and four times I got refused by really? the CT department. Wow. Yeah. wow. Because, I, I, never, because, I didn't realize you because, could do that. Consultants wait. were booking CT scans and the department would say, no, we're not fucking doing it. Is it because you couldn't fit in the machine? Is that no, why? Well, I could fit in the machine. I thought it's that's why they... Anymore. I thought, okay, I thought maybe they were like, no, he's too big. He's going to break our machine if we put him on it. Something like that. I'm small now. Yeah. I'm did you lose? Boy. Did you lose weight? Did you? Are you lighter now? I think so. Yeah. So you could I catch pneumonia so, yeah. like once every year and keep the trim that way. Have you had pneumonia then? The first thing. So we get on the video. I haven't talked to Dave in two weeks, which we did Skype a couple of weeks ago, and he was terribly ill. He was a lot nicer to me then. The first thing he says is, "He's like, you look a lot smaller. Have you been losing weight?" 
Thanks. No, actually, what is it? Uh, what is the? That's it. That's it. That's the. Yes. So, so you ended. You did end up getting blood clots. You were saying. Huh? Yeah. One, one on each lung. One on each lung. I'm on warfarin now. I have to go for blood tests every two days. Okay. So they get my. Unfortunately, at the moment, my I need my blood clotting needs to be between two and three. Okay. Um, so one is normal, two and three. Mine needs to be because of the fact that I've had blood clots on my lungs, and currently it's running at three point five. So it, my blood is super, super runny at the moment. Um, so they're pissing about with dosings till they get it right. But unfortunately, it means I have a two-hour trip every two days to get blood tests done at the clinic. Oh wow, that's fun. <laughs> Bit of a ball ache, but it is what it is. Wow. But I am slowly but surely starting to feel human again. Good, good. Well, that's uh, that's that, that is better than human. before. That's better than, bef- yeah. than before you were sick, even. Well, yeah, so I may not look human, but at least I'm starting to feel human. Well, uh, uh, yeah. What were you going to say? So back with a vengeance, isn't it? Um, Do we call this, where- like, season two or something? You know? Do we- uh, the return of? The return of, mm. yeah, something like that. So, guys, today we uh, we're gonna go straight into our steroid profile. Uh, we took a poll, uh, Masteron is what everybody wanted to hear. So, we've got the Masteron to talk about. Uh, after that, we have a few listener questions. And if anybody wants to uh, post up any questions here in the feed uh, while we record this live at the Facebook group, feel free. Um, but yeah, Dave, I put up a thread and this was a few weeks ago when we thought we were going to start back up, uh, b- before you took another turn for the worse. Um, and I asked people, I was like, what, what steroid do you guys want us to do a profile on next? And I, I threw up like six different cutting drugs and Masteron won by a landslide. Like there were like, I think Halo got like three, four and, and Masteron got like 70. So, yeah. Okay. Where do we start? Oh, and I also do want to add, we got to remember from now on, one of our female listeners said, hey, when you guys do the steroid profiles, can you also talk how the steroid would be used for women or if it should be used for, you know, how would it apply for a female as well? So we do have to remember that. So let's start there then. What's your thoughts on a female using Masteron? Um. I think that it, uh, for for an advanced user at a low dose, I don't think it's the worst decision. I think that there are steroids that could be harsher for a female, but I do think that it is going to be uh, tricky ground, and I do think that you should probably be expecting some side effects with that, even at at, at a moderate dose. Now, I do, what would you call a moderate dose? Now that I think would be would probably vary person to person, you know. But I haven't personally used Masteron with female. I know several females that have used it, um, so that's it. I I don't want to comment on dosing because it would it wouldn't be from my own experience. How about you? I it's not a drug I would particularly lean towards for a female. Yeah. Uh, but four or five weeks out from a show, it has potential with the right physique. But I would say you'd be looking at someone who was quite lean and, and quite heavily muscled for it to really have a benefit in, in, in helping the way they look for stage. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's anti estrogen properties, though not huge, are going to help um, in the last stages of diet for a show for a female. Yeah. Um, dosing wise, I would have said you're probably looking at 25, 50 at tops. Yeah, I could see 50. I could see 50. And that would be, that would be um, effective, I'm sure. Yeah. And it would probably be, you know, either. now I know that, so, so Masteron was originally used as an advanced breast cancer medication for women. Mm-hmm. And it, it was, yeah. They were dosing it at like I believe like 300 milligrams a week at that time, which that's that would that would do a number on you, you know. Obviously in case of breast cancer, they they obviously probably wanted to push it, but I mean that was an aggressive drug at that at that dose. 
the lesser evil, isn't it? At the end of the day, what's worse, a bit of you know right. viralization. And the thing is, <clears throat> they're not going to be using 300 milligram for months and months on end. This is going to be a short, sharp blast to try and uh, help with the cancer treatment. Yeah. Um, I mean, Masteron. The biggest problem facing Masteron today is probably the fact that have you actually got Masteron? Mm. Um, it, it's like Primo in that it, it's it's very commonly faked. Mm. Uh, some people regard it as a poor man's Primo. I would agree um, with that. I, you know, I, if you can't afford yeah. Primo, go for Master. I actually um, I get better results from Masteron. Primo for some reason, every time I've used it, I've tended to break out with it, whereas Masteron I don't. I, I'll use long acting Masteron, and I feel like it, it it does the same effect for me, but with less side effects. Uh, I would have said probably make for me Masteron's probably going to give you slightly more bang for your buck, to be quite honest. Than, sure. Than Primo. I could see that. Uh, Primo slightly milder, uh, but really. You're pulling hairs when you start looking at toxicity of those two drugs side by side because MAST is definitely one of the milder compounds out there. It's, you know, we're, we're not talking something that's highly toxic. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's DHT. Uh, it doesn't aromatize, has a, has a mild anti estrogenic effect. Um, binds with SHBG as well. Um, it, it's the dog. <laughs> we hear him over there. Yeah. Um, he's not like being away from me since I got out of hospital. He likes to be around me. Aww. Um, but uh, Dave's only friend. No, I don't know that. I wouldn't have said I've got. I wouldn't say he's my friend. I don't think I've really got any friends, to be honest. We did get a lot of people who who were uh, who you were. In, I don't want to say praying. I think that's a little strong. Maybe some people were praying, but you were in yes, a lot of people's died, thoughts. Died. <laughs> A lot of pe- you were in a lot of people's thoughts, uh, by the way. I, I think my ranking on Deadpool went up. I bet. I bet. Uh, I think there was many, many edging bets that I might not come out. Uh. <laughs> so there is Master on NFA, the long acting version, and then there's the propanate version. Okay. I, I'll tell you the truth, man. So, and I think I mentioned this on a previous episode. Somebody had said to me years ago they thought that the propanate version worked better, a little better for contest prep, a little drier. I don't see the difference. I've used uh, Master on Enethate for um, most of my later contest prep cycles just because there's less volume. You can get it at a higher milligram per milliliter, uh, you, you less it frequent injections, so it's less of a pain in the butt. Yeah, there, there's a general law that the fast-acting compounds are slightly drier, uh, mm-hmm. including test prop. Yeah. I've never seen anything to support this apart from people's personal opinion. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying people are wrong. I just don't know. I've never seen any evidence either way. But a lot of people do seem to think that the, the fast acting versions um, are slightly drier. Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, mass comp prep, good little drug, recomp, good little drug. Not hugely beneficial in the off season, but if you are starting from a very lean base, then it would definitely be something you could consider as a compound. Um, definitely more towards a dieting end of things. That's not to say it can't be used off season because it can, and it, it can also, to a degree, be used as part of your estrogen management. Sure. Because um, uh, you'll get basically two for one, don't you? You know, you get a DHT compound and you get a little bit of management thrown in for free. So it, it has its uses like that. Um, you're not going to see dramatic gains off mass. Um, yeah. But if you're lean enough, you will see a hardening and you will see a, a, a definite change. Uh, it, it's very much like Primo in that, probably a little bit stronger, but uh, in the sense that it's, you know, it's not a bulk. It's, you're not going to see things like you would off the back of something like Decker, yeah, yeah. Uh, where you're going to see the scales go up on almost a daily basis. Um, but for definitely lean, lean bulks, if you really wanted to keep tight, it, it's definitely worth considering as a compound. And I, I think really now it, it's almost bread and butter for contest prep is mass now. It's sort of standardized. Absolutely. Uh, I think that the uh, contest prep bread and butter plan is like a, a test, of course, 
along with Tren and Mastera. That those, yeah. that's really any time you go to any um, national level show, you can pretty much be assured that that's going to be what a large percentage of the people are going to be using is that combo. Mm-hmm. I mean, even just test and mask uh, as a cutting agent. Yeah. Uh, if you want to stay away from the horribleness of trend, test and mast is is a perfectly viable cutting cycle. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you know, you can run your test quite low against your master on. It, it's like I say, its estrogenic effects aren't exactly huge. Um, but it's it's just a nice, neat little all round compound. Yeah. It, it doesn't do anything dramatic. It, it's not particularly anything amazing. Um, but but it's solid and it's dependable as long as it's a genuine thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. It's my personal favorite cutting compound. I I, I like it a lot. I if I were to say do a cutting cycle, uh, of course test is going to be there. And then if I were to pick one other compound, Masteron would be the compound that I would use. I also think it's great for guys that are a little bit older that that do want to cut. <laughs> You know, because a lot of times, you know, somebody who's maybe more introductory, they're going to lean to like an oral, like let's get some Winstrel, you know, or Mm -hmm. they go the opposite direction and they're like, yeah, let's use Trend. But I found that Mastron has very little, very little side effects as far as like you don't get sleep issues the way you do on Trend. Uh, People generally tolerate it pretty well. Plus, it improves your libido, it binds up with SHBG, you have more free test. So for... Mm -hmm. For the guy who's going to be like in his 30s, 40s, 50s and wants to do a cut, there could be more benefits than just getting into better shape with it. No, I agree. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the SHB side of things, not 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 something that a lot of people are probably aware of, but uh, it, 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 it acts in a way like Provira. Absolutely. But better than Provira, you actually get muscle growth or potential yeah. muscle gains from it. So. Yeah, so, I mean, when you look at it that way, you've got a DHT product that gives muscle gains, also reduces SHBG, uh, and also reduces estrogen. It, it, it's quite a nice, neat little compound. Yeah. yeah. It's just not dramatic. That you just got to remember that it's, it's, you know, it's not a mass bill. It's not a big, heavy mass bill. It's going to be subtle, but nice, solid, progressive gains, I think. Yeah. So, dosing, uh, where, would you, where would you say is a, a good dose? And I'll tell you what I've done. I've also taken it pretty high. I'll, I'll, I'll disclose how high I've gone to. <laughs> four? That's a good place. I like four. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I'd say four. Would you say uh, four regardless of the ester, propanate, or enanthate? Oh, no. Uh, four on it and enanthate, uh, propanate, one to 150, three times a week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Which is which is going to sort of balance out blood plasma wise very similar. Yeah, yeah. I've gone as high as I think I went as high as a gram one time. And what did you find there? Uh, well, I that's the year that I pushed to like my absolute extreme. I uh, I I had competed at like one ninety four, and then took the next year off and kept pushing. And then the following year, so that was 2013, then 2015, I dieted. And that's the year I pushed down to 181 was my weigh-in. So I was like beyond peeled. It was literally the leanest I had ever gotten in my life. Um, I can't really say that it that it was worth it at that dose. You know what I mean? Like it, It's not like, oh, wow, things changed. It was just really strong, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, I know. I mean, I don't suppose we should really say this, but, uh, you know, if you go to three gram a test, yeah. you, you'll notice a, a, a whole world of change. Mm. Um, that's a, a completely different level. Um, and I'm not recommending that, by the way. Uh, but it, it is a dose that all of a sudden things start changing up and becoming very, very different. Yeah. Um, I don't think you'll ever get that with master any dose. Uh, I don't think you'll ever get a point where it changes how it acts. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. That's what I noticed too. I, I think it would be whatever, but I, I'd say four, six at a push. But I think four is a nice, good number. I found a picture of that contest prep um, just this morning. It just just actually. happened. Just happened to have it there on his computer. I believe it or not, I just found it this morning. I was looking at some old pictures. I woke up early yeah, at like five a.m. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I was on whatever. Facebook, but I just sent it to you. Check that out. It was uh, this was my my best ever or my leanest ever at the time, and I only weighed 181 pounds. I I had definitely downsized a lot in the process of getting there. And now that I look at that too as a coach, I think to myself, man, if I would have had another month and just spent time filling out. I probably would have been closer to 190 and I probably would have looked a lot better. But you can see there was not an ounce of fat left on me. It was uh, the leanest I had ever gotten for sure. But I was mixing the N and Thank. No, you you're not bad. You could have been leaner. <laughs> I was mixing the, the long acting and the short acting because I, uh, I had a, a blend, actually. It was like 150E in 150 Pro, or excuse me, in 50 Probe. So I was doing that, and then I started boosting up and adding more probe in per shot. So I think I was doing, like, it was a lot. It was a lot. It had to be over 100 a day, you know, to, to get to that dose. I wouldn't suggest doing that now. I, I really, I wanted to see. Because there's a level, like, you can only get so dry. You can only get so hard. You know, you can only take estrogen so low, too, you know. It's like, yeah. so it's like, but at a certain point, you hit zero. And it's not going to get any lower than that. You know, so no, yeah, no. Uh, like you said, there is a point of diminishing return when it comes to dosing. Um, the difference between, for argument's sake, one and a half grams and two grams is not the same as the difference between one gram and one and a half grams. Yeah, um, and the higher you go up, the the smaller the changes yes. are, even though you're still increasing massively. So, like the difference between three and four is is negligible, really. So is the take-home message here that I should be running three grams of tests on my current cycle? No, the take-home message here is that you've lost a lot of size and I really think you need to go and eat. <laughs> I am getting kind of hungry. I'll do that after the show. I uh, I started some mint this week at 100 milligrams. You started some mint? And, and trastolone acetate. No, uh, it's the long-acting one, not the short-acting yeah, one. Yeah. And how are you finding the old mint? Well, I'm, I, I'm on my, started my second week now. I just benched my d dumbbell bench. I broke my record. And when I picked the dumbbells up. Have you finally used the 30 pounders? Yeah. I don't have to use the pink Yay! ones anymore. I don't have to use the pink ones anymore. So I literally, like when I was handling the dumbbells, just getting ready, like on my warm ups and stuff, I picked up the, you know, the 75s and just whip them up, you know. 85, just whip them up, 95s, 100s, whatever. And I could tell it was like, ooh, wow, yeah, I feel stronger. And I, I have I have to say it has to be the, the trust alone. It's a good strength compound. It's quite popular in powerlifting circles and for good reason. Yeah. It is a good strength compound. Um, have you been watching your VP? Uh, no. I'd just be interested to see if it changed at all. That was on. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'll, 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 I plan to check it. I've got my machine here, but uh, I haven't had any signs to tell me that it, that I, like I know that when my blood pressure gets really high, I start getting headaches and I start feeling it in my skin. I haven't had any of that yet, and when that starts happening, then I'm like, oh yeah, I better, better get on it. Otherwise, I check it, you know, once every week or so and just take a look. But yeah, it something I'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know if I see any changes. Yeah, because it's got a reputation for, for bringing BP up, so I'm interested to see, if it, even if it's not pushing it high, high, is, is it bringing it up at all? Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, we've got some listener questions here. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for watching another podcast here at Think Big Bodybuilding Media. And thank you to our great sponsor, TrueNutrition.com, for making this all possible. TrueNutrition.com is owned by Dante Trudell, the creator of DC Training. He wanted to create a supplement company that offered high-quality third-party tested supplements at a fair price. High-quality protein powders, just about every type you could think of. Huge variety of flavors, plus health and performance supplements. Check them out, TrueNutrition.com. And hey, if you use our code ADVICES, you directly support our podcasting. Thanks, guys. Let's get back to the program. We should dive into those. I wanted to take it easy on Dave. So I I don't want to be responsible for you being sick or anything like that. Dude, I am still, I, in genuinely, genuinely, I am still a little bit um, weak and wonderful. Um, so I do tire very easy. Well, I don't want to be responsible for wearing you out. You have a lot of work to do today still, don't you? I do, yes. Um, I need to. I, to be honest, I haven't even started to look at it. I need to organize it and get going. 
Um, I'm currently advertising for new clients, so oh. there's uh, I've had a few inquiries there I need to deal with. Will you work with me? I don't think you can hack it, Scott. No? I don't think you can hack my training programs. No? I probably yeah. couldn't, man. I'm doing like three sets every time I train now. That's it. Yeah. Any more than be that. Interesting to see what, be interesting to see what you thought of them. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to check it out. I'd be uh, curious. A actually, just send it to me, but like, don't put your name on it or anything. Just make it a nice, uh, tidy PDF that I can send out to my clients. If you don't mind. Well, you're doing that shit anyway. So <laughs> <that'll> be... <laughs> All right. So I pulled some questions off of uh, the last episode we did, the D-Ball episode. Um, we'll start out here with uh, T3. Uh, how much and timing somebody who has never used T3 before, uh, how would he go about using it? He's currently on a cut. Starting dose would be 50 micrograms. I don't see any point in going any lower. Yeah. Um, 25, you're just going to really replicate natural levels to a degree. So I would have said start at 50. Um, take it clear of caffeine. Mm. Ideally, on an empty stomach. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ca caffeine will wreck its absorption. Um, you need to be about forty-five minutes clear of caffeine. Um, I didn't know that. So, mm, um, empty stomach, um, and then really, your thyroid is pretty robust. Uh, it's not very often we see people with medication-induced thyroid problems. Um, so it's where you go from there is entirely up to personal opinion. Um, I've seen a nice synergy between T3 and, and growth mm. when taken together. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to work very, very nicely, and even more so if you throw clenbuterol. And I know it's a bit kitchen sinkish because you're throwing three fat burners in together, but there does seem to be a very – synergistic effect yeah. when you put all three of those together they're they're coming they're working in different ways too it's not like you're yeah, just it's... piling on more of the same it's all three different no. things and so they tend to complement each other in the process of releasing fat and oxidizing and everything else um you the only thing you're going to be not so much t3 but you find now and again that people get hold of t4 mm -hmm. um now effectively what happens is our, our bodies produce thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH that causes the release of T4 and T4 is then converted to T3 uh, which is his bioavailability bioavailable form um, the relationship in the body between T4 levels and T3 levels is quite sensitive yeah okay um, now if you increase T3 your body will reduce the production of T4 to compensate for the fact that T3 levels are high. And generally, you don't get any mood issues from high elevated T3. Okay. But if you increase T4 through taking T4, yeah. um, there can be a little bit of a bottleneck effect between T4 and its conversion to T3. I mean, in theory, higher T4 should result in high T3. Right. But that conversion of T4 to T3 can be quite limited. And if you end up with high T4 and, and substantially lower T3, you will suffer very severe depression. Really? Really? As in, I don't want to get out of bed and face the world depression. Huh. Um, so I, didn't I would either. avoid supplementing with T4 on its own, particularly at high doses. Though there is the blended of, I can't remember what it's called now, T4 and T3 mixed. Yeah. Uh, and generally, you work on a ratio of uh, one to four. So if you're running 25 micrograms of T3, you run 100 micrograms of T4. Huh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, just be wary about taking T4 on its own. It's, it, it can end in quite uh, an emotional mess. It's interesting you say that because um, I started T4 recently. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm using growth at 3.3 units a day and I started what would equate to it's low dose, like 50 micrograms of T4. Well, that's very low for T4, actually very low for T4. Yeah. But I have noticed my mood, you know, and I don't, 
I don't get into talking about like, you know, I and the thing is, is I don't like talk about this stuff because I don't want people to feel bad for me. But I've had some some pretty serious mood stuff going on in the last few weeks. And I've started it in the last few weeks. So, you know, just the life stuff and everything, mm-hmm. you know, everything like that. And then this, you know, maybe maybe it's made that worse. I don't know. But uh, it's easy to find out. Just stop the T4. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be worth. Yeah, I think it'd be worth the experiment and see, um, and, st- and stop being cheap and buy some T three. Well, here's the thing, though, is that the reason I'm using it, and we talked about this on another podcast with Dave Kalick, um, that it's through the conversion from T four to T three that you get some some magic with growth hormone. And I can't, I can't mm. get into the whole ins and outs of it. But you know, it was something. I remember people talking about that a lot, like ten years ago. There's the the enzymes are that that <coughs> they convert it will sensitize you to IGF one, uh, making your growth hormone better, basically. Yeah, but you're never going to get IGF one levels to a level where they're going to have any impact on growth anyway. So it's completely fucking pointless. What do you mean? If you're gonna, de- if you're gonna, the, the conversion of T4 to T3 to increase IGF-1 sensitivity. Yeah. But your IGF-1 levels are never gonna be substantially huge in the way that they're gonna promote growth from their own right. Mine are huge right now, because I'm on growth hormone. Yeah, so- but they're not gonna be high enough to promote growth in its own right. That's my point. You've got to be stupidly high. Well, way beyond what growth hormone is gonna produce in order to elicit growth from IGF-1. Yeah, well, I don't. On, on, but IGF, that's on. that's the reason though. IGF one is the reason that that you actually can grow from growth hormone. Yeah, but I don't think you can grow from growth hormone. That's the whole point. Yeah, I I think you can. Not like not like uh, massive gains, but I I think it, it is definitely an anabolic compound. You know what? We'll agree to disagree. Okay, okay. Yeah, I... I it's I'll, rare between me and you, to be honest. We normally agree on most things, but... I, and I think here's the thing, though, is that I'm not going to say that you're going to get huge from taking growth. But if you're not taking growth versus, say, taking 3.3 units every day, after a few years... I think that that person would look different if you had the same person. You had the opportunity, the guy who did and didn't. Then I think that you I, will. I, I don't more. disagree there, and I do think growth has its benefits in recovery and improve recovery and improve cellular turnover and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I just don't think that it warrants as a compound for direct muscular growth. If you want growth from IGF, use IGF, but be prepared to spend. 200 300 every couple of days to fund it yeah. because the dosages required from increlix in order to elicit unsolicited muscle growth are huge and that's yeah i i think we're more on the same page than not then yeah i will say <laughs> one place i will going back to t3 i will say i would start lower um you know we had talked about it before my mindset is i i'm of the mindset with t3 to support thyroid hormone, uh, basically levels. So, you know, when we've talked about this before, I told you my ideas that when you're dieting, thyroid starts getting suppressed. Right. If if you're talking about just maintaining natural levels and support because of the suppressive nature of a calorie deficit, then yes, I agree. 25 micrograms is plenty. Yeah. And so I start there. If you're talking about T3 as a fat burner in its own right. Yeah. think you need to be at the 50 i think 50 you'll definitely get much better results so i'll start at 25 i'll probably run it a little bit longer and then from there i will taper it up over time so if i can you know start at 25 and maybe we get some better results i've seen it happen even where like that's all someone needed where you know we just getting them back up to par you know, it kind of the same thing would be like if you took a natural guy, his test levels are going to get suppressed after dieting for 10 weeks. Yes. But if you gave him TRT, he might rock, you know. So I, I, I think the I mean, the thing is, you don't need T3. You could if you use T3 in a therapeutic dose, i.e. 25 micrograms to, to offset the suppression you're going to get from a, a long term calorie deficit. Yeah. Then all you're doing is maintaining your natural level of fat loss. Yeah. Um, 
none of us particularly need T3 or Clen or GH to lose fat. They just speed up the process and, and make it a little bit less difficult. Yeah. Um, natural guys prove time and time again that you can get in incredible condition without using anything drug-wise. In fact, natty guys tend to get in better condition than drug users do. I've seen it. Um, so, you know, there's definitely no need for these compounds to get in condition. Yeah. But they are an, an option that will or should make the process easier. What would you say is your high at the highest dose that you think would be safe for T3? I've seen, because I've seen a woman take it up to 150, which I think is not a safe dose. I've seen guys run at 100, 125, um, uh, and sustain sustain that uh, and recover from that very, very quickly. Um, but again, with everything, it, it's, it's all about using the, the least amount to achieve the goals rather than trying to gain some bragging rights because you're the one that took the most drugs. Yeah. Um, you don't get a trophy for that. You don't. And, and those certain people have created an element of notoriety through their very high drug use. Boston Lloyd, someone that springs to mind. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's not big, it's not clever and it's just not necessary at the end of the day. Um, and if you're whacking in 200 micrograms of T3 a day because you're dieting, then, then there's either something seriously wrong with your diet yeah, or you've got a severe medical problem uh, because you should not need to go to doses of that level. Yeah. I've, uh... I, know, I know when I have seen people in the past that have done a sort of fat burner blast yeah. at the beginning of the diet where they've gone very high on T3, very high on Clem. And then they've run that for two, two, three weeks, and then they've dropped the doses right down to more sustainable, normal doses, and then just continue from there onwards. Huh. huh. I like, I'm not sure if there's any logic in that, to be quite honest. But uh, yeah, like, except for like the instant gratification, you know. Of, hmm. like, I'll yeah, do the, obviously that that massively accelerated fat loss at the beginning of your diet is always good to get your head in a good place, but uh, yeah whether it has any actual benefit to the overall end result, I doubt it. So I'll take the 25, ride that out for a little while, evaluate, make changes. We may make other changes. Then we, maybe we adjust the clen, you know, maybe we adjust the cardio, maybe we adjust the diet. We toggle through some other switches as we make changes. And then maybe we'll go to 37.5, you know, or if it's liquid, we just go straight numbers. You know what I mean? We go from, <laughs> 25 to 35 or whatever and then i'll jump it again a little while later possibly and be at 50 you know and a lot of times that's the highest i'll take it with a contest prep client but if somebody were in need of speeding it up a little bit let's say they had an issue uh and for whatever reason life comes up you know they're fat, just behind it, yeah, yeah for it. whatever reason they're behind i will go to 75 toward the end of the diet, you know, that last few weeks. But I also want to try to bring it back down a little bit too. I don't think this guy needs to worry about that. He's just wanting to get in better shape. But I do think that too much T3 can leave you flat. And I think, it, so. you know, that can be an issue on stage. It can be an issue in the gym too. So nutrition can yes. manage that, you know. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. It's, it, it's the higher you go, the more you're running the risk of catabolism. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. All right. We had one in the feed here from Corey Wright. He says, uh, how would you improve your EGFR numbers? Uh, stop using. All together? At least TRT, proper TRT based on blood levels. If your EGFR numbers are low, the first thing you're doing is you're coming off cycle. Mm. And you're not going on a bro cruise. You are coming on a cruise that is linked to your blood plasma levels. Hmm. So you are mimicking natural levels. Okay. Next thing would be improve hydration. Yeah. Um, then look at stuff like glutathione. Yeah. Um, astrologus would be the main two supplements I would consider for kidney issues. Okay. Um, there are some other compounds you can use, like NAD+, plus, but it's expensive. Um, and it's got to be the injectable, right? NAD+, plus has to be IV. 
because I've seen it since, you know, you were the first person to really tell me about it. And since we talked about it, now I see it popping up. I'm at the health food store and I see it in capsules and stuff like that. The, the capsules are okay for a general sort of anti-aging, slow the process down sort of long-term supplementation program. Mm. Um, as an IV product taken regularly, um, it's been shown to, to, to have help in recovering damaged kidneys. In, in fact, up until me having the contrast, my EGFR had gone from, at its worst, which was 20, it stabilized at 26, and just before I admit to hospital, it was 35. Wow. Um, and that last gain from 26 to 35 has all been down to NAD. Yeah, that's pretty incredible, man, the results yeah, of that um, stuff. So, I mean, obviously, at the moment, I'm back in with renal, actually, next week, I think it is, or the week after. So I'm waiting until I get the results of that work before I start a new program of NAD to see if I can undo the damage that's been done by the contrast. Okay. I have a good feeling and, you'll, you'll be able to. I, I have uh, faith. Post-contrast, post contrast, it dropped down to 29. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know what it is now. I'm back on astrologer, uh, astrologus, and I'm back on glutathione. Um, so I'll I'll see what impact that's had when I test at renal on the 16th, okay. and then based on that, I'll uh, see where we're going to go with the NAD. But if I'm hoping I can get me EGFR back into the 40s, okay. but yeah, if you if and it's something that I'm seeing more and more in bloods is low EGFR. Uh, I'm seeing more and more guys in the 50s, even seeing guys in the 40s, particularly guys that have just come off trend cycles. Mm. Now, generally off the back of a trend cycle, the kidney levels do bounce back up. But it's something, you know, we've always been hyper-conscious of, of liver. Oh, don't take too many orals, it'll wreck your liver. Oh, don't do that, it'll wreck your liver. And yet the cases of liver problems within users are very, very rare. Compared to kidney you know. Whereas what I am seeing now is a growing number of people coming through our door for bloods who have impaired kidney function. Mm, yeah, I mean, it's it, a growing number significantly. Um, I think in the last, since January, I've had one with liver values elevated to such a point that it was medically concerning. Oh, yeah. I've probably had 30 or 40 with kidney values that are medically concerning. So get your levels checked, guys. Get your blood work done. It, it is important. definitely the, the the new one to watch is kidneys, definitely. Um, and um, unfortunately with them, they're not like your liver. They don't bounce back. All right. So after that, we've got uh, – this is still from the, the YouTube uh, feed, the last episode we put out. And by the way, if you guys are watching this on YouTube – Feel free to comment. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, we'd be happy to answer your questions on the next show, assuming Dave's still alive. Signs of high estrogen. How do you know uh, that your estrogen is out of range? Besides, obviously, getting lab work done. Because you become a girl. Yeah. Yes. So you'll be emotional. You may have water retention. Look for sock marks on your ankles. Or slightly puffy face. Obviously, you may have itchy nipples. Uh, you may have libido issues. You you may start to have a unknown, undescribable, unexplainable interest in hobby craft. <laughs> hobby craft. That's not a term we use here, but I, I follow you. Yeah. Um, you might want to start taking up knitting. Knitting. Things like that. Yeah, that's definitely a sign of high issue. Knitting was popular <laughs> for a while. There was like a lot of men that were like, yeah, I knit. You know, they were like, it was like the hipsters. The physical signs are going to be water retention, um, libido issues, and water retention will come either in the form of water in the face or, or water in the lower limbs, particularly around your ankles. So just like, check your sock lines. Um, a reduction in sexual desire or reduction in sexual function. Uh, and obviously the old gyna, uh, nipple sensitivity. Yeah. But psychologically, you would look at emotional triggers. So you might be a little bit more sensitive than normal. 
Yeah. Which that can be hard to judge sometimes too, you know? Uh, it can, but if you're watching a film that normally doesn't bother you and you're sat there sobbing your heart out into your hanky, then, the, you know, you might start thinking, mm, hang on a minute. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and and if, if your last, your missus has started to turn around and go, you know what, you're much more sensitive and understanding just lately. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a fair sure sign your estrogen is probably on the up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people tolerate high estrogen very, very well. Um, you know, and I am a... Though I am a believer in managing estrogen, I am also a believer in, in looking at side effects and, and sort of going, well, you know what, if it's not bothering me, I might leave it well alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you don't have to run estrogen at a certain level. Um, you know, you only really need to reduce it if it's creating problems for you. If it's not creating problems for you, it's an amazing growth factor. Yeah. Um, you've got to watch fat gain as well when estrogen's elevated, but... Uh, Oh, that's another one as well, fat gain. Yeah, we missed that one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that would be one reason if you're dieting that you really, you know, it could be counterproductive to your progress. Yeah. If you're dieting, then you want to keep your estrogen quite low. Um, to a degree, the lower the better, but obviously if estrogen gets too low, you'll still have libido issues. Now you'll get joint issues. And now you can start getting stuff like vision issues. Yeah. Oh, I. you know what? <laughs> One of the doctors, I, I don't even want to see. So this, there's a doctor who's one of the guys who's anti-anti-estrogen. Anti-anti-anti-estrogen. Anti-controlling estrogen. Anti, 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 anti anti he doesn't believe in AI. Just, just let it run rampant and it'll yeah. be wherever it wants to be. So he has this uh, client. It's an American thing. This. He has this client. Uh, or I, I should say patient who's a TRT patient who is having sexual dysfunction issues. And the doctor has gone over all of his labs with him with, except for his estrogen. The testosterone is at like the very high end of normal. I want to say that there was some other stuff they were looking at. It's all at the very high end, but he will not let the guy look at his estrogen levels and he refuses, he doesn't want to give him an AI either. But the guy has a bunch of sensual, sexual dysfunction issues. Uh, and, and, you know, because we were told, we were told that you should, it's all in your head. You know, there's no reason that you should be having sexual dysfunction issues. There's no reason you should be getting side effects from high estrogen. <laughs> I'd say get a new doctor. I don't know in that case. I don't know. Uh, what do you want to bet that that guy's estrogen levels are through the roof, Dave? If everything oh, else is high? Massively. Massively. Um, yeah, I mean, come on. Let's not be stupid about things. I, I know. It, it's There's been this trend, uh, particularly stateside, for high TRTs and, and letting estrogen run rampant. And it's fine as long as you don't have a problem. But if you have a problem, you have a problem and deal with it. Don't be fucking stupid about it. I'll tell you what I have seen recently is someone who now does not aromatize very well and as a result has very low estrogen. Okay. Yeah, I've seen this too. I, in fact, mm. I'd say that I'm less sensitive than I used to be. And um, unfortunately, I, I can't find a solution bar just time. And hopefully his aromatase levels are restored to normal and he'll go back to producing normal levels of estrogen. Hmm. But he's having some problems because his estrogen is, is substantially low. Mm -hmm. His testosterone is normal. Um, and there's just no other mechanism behind it that, that I, we can put his finger on. Yeah. Huh. Now I had seen... Um, I don't See, I don't know if I made this up in my head, if I dreamt this, if I've seen it. If someone told me about it, I honestly don't know where it came from, but I swear blind there was a study that that had hinted at uh, long-term AI use could actually permanently damage aromatase production. Ah, huh, no kidding. Mm. I, I, I haven't heard of that. No, and I'm not sure if it's something that someone said and I've got it mixed up or if it's something yeah. I've actually genuinely read. Yes, yeah, so don't quote um, us, guys. Don't quote us no, on that one. I could be talking complete, absolute <laughs> fucking dog bollocks. Yeah. Um, 
for some reason it's sticking in my head that there have been cases of damage to aromatase production through overuse of AI. Yeah. Um, but like all things, you know, when you're going to start artificially changing your hormone levels, you you have to manage the consequences. Yeah. All right. Looks like we're getting a few more, so we can maybe rapid fire a couple of these. Uh, any dangers in taking DHEA if you have a family history of prostate cancer? Not particularly, no. But continue to get your prostate checked, right? Oh, obviously. Check your PSA on a very, very regular basis. Luckily, prostate cancer, if you want to call it luckily, is the easiestly treatable cancer. Uh, and one in five males are expected to get it. Whew. I don't want that. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Charles, is Proviron mild enough um, for most uh, that the benefits for SHBG outweigh the negative impacts on blood work? And if so, what is a good place dosage wise, uh, complementary with one gram of test? I'm curious what he means by the negative impacts on blood work. Possibly cholesterol. From S from Proviron. Yeah, I'm wondering. I, I don't have any I don't know about that if the, if it does have an issue with cholesterol, but that would be my guess, you know. I don't think it has a huge impact on cholesterol. Um that that I'm not sure what he means by negative impacts on blood work. Um I mean obviously if you're gonna take Proviron uh, and you're gonna increase free test, then free test is gonna drive SHPG down. Yeah. Because that's what free test does, it drives SHPG down. Um the one thing I'm, I'm curious about, um, and it's popped in my head a few times, is I need to actually get my arse in gear and look at it when I get some fat, some time or some energy. But SHBG is responsible for transporting hormones around the body. Mm -hmm. So if we lower SHBG, do we reduce the circulation of testosterone? Yeah, yeah, Scott Stevenson that has a, a there's a I think it's called like the free androgen hypothesis it's a something I can't remember what it is but Scott's talked about that that SHBG may be something we don't want to suppress I'm I'm of the ilk of that I'm of the ilk that this this fascination with low SHBG is potentially a negative and not a positive yeah um I mean, the idea is SHBG binds with, with, with a sexual hormone, transports it around the body, then releases it. Yeah. Yes, obviously, the more testosterone we have bound, the less free we have. But it's part of the transport mechanism to get the hormone around the body. Um, if you've got very low SH, I know I've seen SHBG as low as four. Oh, wow. Um, if you've got very low SHBG, does that mean you're going to have a higher concentration of hormone at your injection site? Hmm. Um, if so, then there, there could be some merit in that, that that would create a level of site growth because you'd have a higher concentration of androgens in that area. Hmm. Um, but then again, does that then mean that free test in its free states dying off without really interacting correctly with the body because it's not getting around the body? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. It's probably one for Scott. That's probably beyond my brain power. Is that one? <laughs> All right, one more, and we will wrap it up. Save Dave some energy for the day. Um, this is in regard to we were talking about D ball on that last episode, uh, combining D ball with Anadrol. We did. We have mentioned this a little bit in the past, but uh, I've done it. I've combined. I think it was fifty draw with thirty D ball. And I did that for four weeks, and then I removed the anadrol for another two weeks, and I was using that with uh, test and and De test and deca. That was, uh, I mean, it, it definitely worked. I don't know if I'd do that again. Well, I mean, I mean, there's no magic formula to combining the two. You're not going to get an amazing synergy out of combining the two, but you are just increasing your overall oral intake of, of steroids. Sure, sure. So as a result, you know, the, the higher to to a point, the, the higher that dose goes, the, the, the better response you're going to get. Yeah. Um, you just got to manage overall toxicity. I mean, just remember you're bagging in 80 milligrams or 100 milligrams, depending on what you're doing. Um 
you know, and that's 100 milligrams of oral you're taking now. So just bear that in mind when it comes to toxicity management. But uh, and I would suppose mainly its impact on your stomach and appetite and, and the fact that you can still eat. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's no secret formula uh, or synergy between d ball and Anadrol. Um, you're just sticking more of an oral yeah. in the same way if you took... 80 mega D-ball over 40 mega D-ball, you're going to have a different result. Yeah. I, I, um, I will say that I think you may have, so if, if Anadrol doesn't have the same estrogen issues that D-ball does, uh, you may be able to circumvent higher estrogen than if you just ran more D-ball. And if, Oh yeah, but you could just, just run Anabar. You could, you could. You could, do, you could just run Winstrel with Ebo. You could just run T-Ball with Ebo. You know, it, it, there's no... And if Anadrol but, gives you stomach upset, you can't eat with it, then 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 taking a lower dose of that along with D-Ball would take that away. So I'm looking for the positives here. You know what I mean? I'm looking for, well, what would you get out of it beneficially? So I guess, you know, I feel like I might be reaching a little bit, but those are two things you would get. I, I, I would say you are. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, ye old mucker. What's an old mucker? I've no idea. That was uh I was told to bring that up uh to you. This is uh this is uh, uh news or excuse me, uh language learning English with Dave. I would assume uh, I would assume that that sounds like a, a dialect thing which would be, you know, uh, well, if someone's your mucker, they're your friend. Oh, okay. See, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, if you called me yeah, a mucker, so that, I wouldn't think you were saying I was your friend. Yeah, you, 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 as long as you're mucky, they're your friend. So it would be a, a complimentary thing rather than an insult, which obviously is very painful for you to give me. I understand how much that must have just hurt. <laughs> you old mucker. You know something? I am now absolutely knackered. You, I wore you out. Yeah, I am. I am fucked. Fuck. We didn't do this short enough. I wanted to preserve your energy, Dave. No, it's all right. I'll uh, I'll go upstairs and have something to eat and a, a cup of tea, and uh, then I'll get my head down and crack on with the day's work. Let's do this in the future. If you're good to start doing the show again, let's keep them even shorter for now. Let's... No, 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 Scott. It's not fair on people that, that listen in. They don't like I us just... anyway, Dave. They don't well, like, they like us. me. They just don't like you. They think you're a wanker. Uh, they quite like me. There were people, like I said, there were people that were very upset to hear that you were sick. See, I have friends. And I asked them how much you were paying them to say those nice things about you. A lot. A lot? Yeah. A lot, yes. Well, it paid off. I'm skinned now. I'm skinned now. I've got no money at all. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you, uh, if you have any questions for us, if you're watching this at YouTube, feel free to comment uh, below. Uh, let us know your thoughts and uh, let us know some questions for next time. Assuming that Dave doesn't croak on us, we'll continue to do this program. Why is everybody obsessed with me dying? <laughs> I'm just glad you're getting better. We did. We tried yeah. to do the show a few weeks ago and Dave was so sick still. He was like, no, we got to do the show. I was like, Dave, you're still sick. He was on, crawling on the floor. He's like, I got to do the program. They're waiting. Dedicated to the cause, you see. Yes. Unlike lightweight Scott there that takes a <laughs> day off if he stubs his toe. All sorts of things have changed since you've been away, Dave. Have they? Yeah. I, actually, I don't know what's really changed. There's been no really. Oh, the Olympia is moved to, to, Florida. to Florida. That happened while you were away. Why? Uh, because of they weren't going to there was a change with the like the regulations in Las Vegas and they were only going to yeah they were only going to allow like 200 people in the theater or something so yeah. okay yeah. I'm surprised the Olympia is going ahead actually yeah yeah I think it'll be down on international competitors yeah well, the good ones uh, I think it, are all still common most of them is, is Hadi got a visa I don't know I hear he's looking sick though yeah, I saw a picture the other day. He looked uh, saying that Big Grammy's looking good, but then Big Grammy always looks good, and then he just doesn't seem to Deliver. look the same when he stands on stage, does it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but 
And Phil's back this year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I want to see. He'll take it again? I want to see Brandon win. Honestly, do you? I do. I want to see Brandon show everybody what's up. I, I I don't know whether it'll happen or not, but I want to see him show everybody what's up and solidify because he's he kind of came in without Phil there and there's always been kind of like a little bit of an asterisk next to his name now by some people's standards because you can always find a reason to detract from someone well you know like oh that guy got his pro card well there's only three people that were good in his class you know it's like there's always something but at the end of the day in my opinion Brandon Curry is a very deserved Mr. Olympia and I would love to see him come back and I'd love to see him deserve that win let's put it that way I want to see him be his all-time best and have that be good enough to beat everybody else. Is Flex Lewis doing the Open? He's not. No. He he pulled out. He had a shoulder issue. Ah, right. So, yeah, he pulled out, and then right after that, they made the announcement that Rami was getting a special invite. So, I think they got to keep Need it the interesting. Numbers, then. Yeah. Need the numbers then, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, whether you like the mass of Rami or not, and um, aesthetics aside, I do think he is a divert. He's deserved to stand on the Olympia stage. Yeah, just 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 because of the sheer physical size of the man. How about James? Did you did you know James well? Because we we hadn't really talked about him a lot on our show. Um, I I knew James briefly as a junior. We were stable mates for a very short period of time. Stable mates. Uh, yeah, same sponsor. Oh, okay. Um, he seems to have come on leaps and bounds the last year. Yeah, he has, hasn't he? His density and thickness is is almost Dorian esque. Yeah, I've heard um, other people say that. Yeah, it, it is. Um, how he's going to stack up to an Olympia lineup? I've no idea. Yeah. Um, you want to take that? Uh, Listen to Dave's. Well, what is that call? What is that tone Dave has? Hello? Yeah. Can I call you back in about 15 minutes, please? Yeah, that's fine then, mate. Calls back in an hour. Oh, hi. No, we finished the fucking podcast. So don't start getting stroppy. <laughs> Mister, I need to go and make a tea. I need to go have something to eat. I need to go and wash my bum and everything else you come out with before we start a show. <laughs> I need to go wash my bum? Have I said yeah. that? Did I actually say that That's, one time? Yeah, you actually said that, yeah. You said you had a sweaty crack and you needed to go wash it. <laughs> was that, somebody asked us, was that the Spice Girls on your ringtone? No, I don't know what it is. It's just a standard <laughs> ringtone. I never changed it. I've had the phone three years. I've never changed the ringtone. Big T says it's the Spice Girls. I I would like to believe that. I think that. <laughs> you know what? I might actually put the Spice Girls on it now just to spite the lot of you. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. Let Dave get some rest. Uh, for another episode of Drugs and Stuff with Dave Crossland, I'm Scott McNally. Check out truenutrition.com. And, of course, go to crosslands.org.uk. Guys, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Dave. Bye-bye now.